Machine learning has created the greatest business opportunity in history. This opportunity is going to be open for maybe three to five years, and after that, massive lock-in will set in. So the time to act is now. Let's look at what machine learning does today and where it's headed. Machine learning is the answer to the fundamental paradox of the information age. We have more choices than ever before, and that makes choosing a lot harder. If, we, if you go to your local Barnes & Noble, you can choose from maybe 50,000 books, but Amazon has millions. So what do you do? The answer is, Amazon has a model of you based on everything you've done on their site. This model tries to predict which books you like and suggest those to you. Effectively, it does your browsing for you and presents you with your own bookshelf, different from everyone else's. Netflix has a model like that for movies. 33% of Amazon's revenue comes from its customer models and 75% of Netflix's. And it's not just books or videos. Increasingly, it's everything you consume, online or offline. Tweets, Facebook updates, web searches, music downloads, stocks, shoes, groceries. Walmart uses machine learning to decide which goods to stock and where to put them in the store. Machine learning is the new middleman in every transaction. It does 99.9% .9 of the choosing from the millions of items available to maybe the dozen that you actually look at. And it's not just with products, it's jobs, medical treatments, even relationships. These days, a third of all marriages start on the internet, and the matchmakers are machine learning algorithms. So there are children alive today who wouldn't have been born if not for machine learning. But there's a big problem with all of this. Each company's model of you is based on just its interactions with you because that's all the data it has access to. So its model is extremely narrow and incomplete. It doesn't know you very well, and often the things it recommends are way off the mark, as I'm sure you've all noticed. It's remarkable how much value these learning systems create given how primitive they are, but surely there's a better way. The better way is to pool all the data that you generate and learn from it one big 360-degree model of you. Think of all the variables that characterize you and how they depend on each other. Machine learning can, in principle, figure out what those dependencies are and, as a result, predict one set of variables from another. Predict what you need right now. Predict whether two people are a good romantic match based not just on their profiles, but on their entire life. Predict whether you like a particular job at a particular company, based on everything it knows about you, the job, and the company. Even predict whether you're ready for a career change. From your vital signs, continuously being captured by a smartphone sensors, predict whether you're about to have a heart attack and call 911. If today's models of you, each based on only a sliver of your data, are already so valuable, imagine how valuable such a 360-degree model of you would be. Now you might be thinking, whoa, this is creepy. I don't want a computer model running my life. I want to be in control. But think about it. You're actually still in control. The model is just doing all the things you'd do yourself if you had the time, making the same choices you'd make. And if the model does something you don't want it to do, you correct it, and it will do better next time. That's what learning is all about, whether it's human learning or machine learning. So you'll soon get used to it. In fact, my prediction is that your personal model will quickly become even more indispensable than your smartphone. Getting by without it, dealing with the information overload, making it through the fog of life without your model will soon seem unendurable. And if you think about it, this idea of having something that makes most of your decisions on your behalf is actually not that alien. It already exists. It's called your subconscious. Your subconscious does exactly the job of selecting from the countless different things you could do, the few ones that you will actually consciously consider. Your consciousness is just the tip of the iceberg, and with your personal model, the iceberg is about to get a lot bigger. 
In fact, a good way to think about your model is as an extension of your brain. Some people call it the exocortex. A notebook is a little bit of exocortex. A hard disk is a much bigger one, but they're passive. They're just memory. With your model, your exocortex will get active and start doing things for you. There's another big difference between your model and your subconscious. Your subconscious lives alone inside your head. It doesn't communicate with anyone else's except through your behavior. But your model will communicate continuously with other people's and organizations' models. Asking and answering questions, negotiating, competing, collaborating. So instead of a separate subconscious for each person, we'll have a collective subconscious for all humanity. We'll have a society of models. The lock-in from personal models will dwarf the lock-in from operating systems or enterprise software or anything else. You think it's a pain to move all your stuff when you buy a new smartphone? Imagine moving to a new provider of your personal model. It would be like having your memory wiped. Suddenly you have severe amnesia because most of what you know that you need to run your life is in your old model, not your brain. And your new model has no data yet. It would be a fate worse than death. So whoever provides people with their personal models will be running the world economy and have massive lock-in. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this may be the greatest business opportunity in history. Now, of course, this opportunity has not gone unnoticed. Several powerful companies are already pursuing it full tilt. Google has Google now. Apple has Siri. Microsoft has Cortana. Facebook has M. Amazon has Echo, and, and there are others. These companies have a lot of data, and they have a lot of talent working for them, including some great people in this room. So is it game over? Wouldn't it be crazy to try to compete with them? Well, actually, no. The problem is that each of these companies has its existing business model. And at the end of the day, none of them are compatible with this idea of your personal model. The reason is simple. These companies have a conflict of interest. They want to serve you, but they also want to make money in their specific ways. Apple makes money by selling you gadgets. Google makes money by showing you ads. Sergey Brin says that Google wants to be the third half of your brain. But would you want to have a part of your brain constantly trying to show you ads? No. What we really need is a different kind of company. A company that is to your data a bit like your bank is to your money. Your bank stores your money and keeps it safe, but it does more than that. It invests it on your behalf. Similarly, your data bank stores your data, learns and continually updates the model of you from it, and uses the model to do things for you. It makes money from, let's say, a subscription fee so that it doesn't have a conflict of interest when choosing things for you. Its basic commitment that it lives or dies by is that your data and model will never be used against your interests. Now, of course, this is not completely foolproof, but then again, you yourself are not completely foolproof. And once you have this model, your digital alter ego, you can go to town with it. You tell it you're looking for a job, and it instantly interviews for all the open positions that match your specs by interacting at high speed with the models of the employer's HR departments. While one copy of your model is doing this, another can be looking for a car for you, exhaustively researching all the options and haggling with the car dealer bots so you don't have to. In order to pull this off, you need three things. The first one is a way to get all your data together in one place. The way you do this is by routing all your interactions through what's called a proxy server. Once you install the proxy on your devices, everything passes through a middleman in the cloud. The middleman records everything, and then the learning can begin. The second thing you need is better learning algorithms than we have today. To learn a unified model of you, we need a unified learning algorithm capable of learning from all the different kinds of data about you and integrating it into a coherent whole. We need a master algorithm. That's what a lot of my research is about, and my book goes into it in some detail. Suffice it to say that we're making good progress on this. 
We won't have the ultimate learning algorithm on hand in the next few years, but we'll have one that's good enough for these purposes. Most important, you need a way to get the wheels turning. If you have no data to start with, you have nothing to offer. This is where the incumbents, the Googles and the Apples, have their biggest advantage, because they already have an ongoing interaction with their users that's generating lots of data. So what can you do? Anything that makes it worthwhile for users to install your proxy. One reason could be privacy. Provide your proxy server as a way to anonymize transactions. Another one is avoiding lock-in. Provide a home in the cloud for your users' data, but prominently make it easy for them to move it to another site. Or start by providing a better, more integrated interface to the online world than people have today. Not a sure shot by any means, but as you can see, there are many avenues. On the other hand, if you think that one of the existing players, Google, Apple, Microsoft, etc., will win the race, then buy its stock. They may be worth hundreds of billions of dollars today, but whoever wins in this arena, new or old, has a good chance of becoming the world's first trillion dollar company. Of course, you don't have to be the platform owner to take part in this revolution. As with every wave of technological innovation, there are tremendous opportunities in riding the coattails of the change. Take apps, for example. The future of apps is exactly the opposite of the present. Today, every app is a standalone product and tries to hog your attention and wall you off from other apps as much as possible. But no one has the patience to learn a lot of different apps. And it's a huge pain when you need to use more than one app to accomplish something. So the writing is on the wall. In the world of personal models, the model sits between all the apps and the user. And it's the model that selects which app to use for what. So the most successful apps would be the ones that work well with many others. And that the model can easily and extensively adapt to its user. And this is just one example. There are many others. More generally, no matter what business you're in, you need to be ready for this sea change. It's not just that the products and services you offer have to become more and more customizable. Your decisions of what products and services to offer in the first place and of what their features will be down to the smallest details will be driven by your customers' models. But you don't own them. And even if you're a Fortune 500 company, with few exceptions, you won't have enough data about your customers to build a model that's competitive with the data banks. So you'll have to make alliances and become part of an ecosystem of data and models, either centered on one of the big data banks or with enough scale to become one of them. If you flub this, you risk becoming just a satellite with the data banks capturing most of the value, or you could go out of business altogether. Finally, all of us as a society are going to have to decide what kind of society of models we want to have. What's allowed, what's not, how do we ensure that everyone benefits, how do we make the transition as smooth as possible. There's lots to figure out. And of course, it won't happen if we let the data remain balkanized, or if we let premature lock-in take hold or if people don't trust any company enough to be the custodian of their model and all their data. So there's something we need to do as individuals and as a society, and there's something we need to do as entrepreneurs, innovators, and investors. As individuals, we need to take control of our models. And as innovators, we need to make that possible. If we do this, there's a bright future where our lives will be happier and more productive. If we don't, it's a huge missed opportunity. It's in our hands. Thank you.